being in the room at the ground after it and, and that realisation coming into my mind, what I what I experienced because I was grabbing your leg. Yeah, I remember you were touching my leg saying, can you feel this? And, and, and in my heart, I knew that I could feel that that life force, it wasn't, it wasn't there. Today I spoke with Paul Harrigan, also known as the Chief. Not only did he galvanise the football team, he brought the whole town together. Post rugby league, many know him for his media career. Though to Newcastle and myself, he means a whole lot more. Paul was literally by my side when I got injured in Melbourne and has remained there ever since. A lot of people don't realise that when I got injured, you were there. Yeah. And obviously I think back to that time when I first got taken off from underneath the sheds because it was, there was so much unknown and the feeling in my mind was so clear. It was such a bizarre time in my life. But yeah, there wasn't many people in that room with me. It was yourself, uh, my physio, the doctor and Wayne. I just wanted to know, I've never really asked you, how did that affect you? Well, I'm glad you asked because um, being in the room at the ground after it and, and that realisation coming into my mind, what I what I experienced because I was grabbing your legs. Yeah, I remember you were touching my legs saying, can you feel this? And, and, and in my heart, I knew that I could feel that that life force, it wasn't, it wasn't there. Yeah. But also when we went to the hospital and, um, and seeing you and talking to you as you're getting rolled into this big unknown door that's taking you away. And then we waited most of the night, nearly till dawn with Corbin. And then about five o'clock I, I, went, I went home to tell you the truth, I was really affected. I, 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 I felt so many different emotions and I, I just couldn't get them over. I suppose one was, because you're, you're so much younger than me, it just felt like my boy was there and this had just happened. When that you wheel through that door and the things that we're talking about and, and mm. I, I, it just, nothing really mattered in life anymore to me. Every, nothing yeah. made sense. Um, and I think with everyone um, in the club and the town, nothing just made sense, nothing seemed worthwhile. But for me, I, I couldn't, I felt guilty that that happened to you and I couldn't get over it. I yeah. felt like, I, even I felt like it was hard to talk to you sometimes because I felt... Yeah, no, I can... Everyone from their own different view um, around that felt something because it was such a powerful moment um, in everyone's life. And uh, that's why, you know, when I see you doing these magical things uh, in a roundabout way, I kind of say to myself, you've been dealt this cards, whether it's a karmic cards, whatever, but you know what? You're gonna create more inspiration. You're gonna have um, a life of purpose fulfilling 10 times the life you're gonna have. And I mean that, I don't say it lightly because, mate, you are destined to be the captain for the Knights forever and a day and to be one of the great players. But you'll do more good, yeah. much more good. I appreciate that. Um, in the role that you're doing, so. Yeah, but I'm, I'm glad we're talking about that because oh, I had trouble. You yeah, know, I had trouble with that. I really did. When you think about the change that's going on in Newcastle in the nights, I don't want to be selfish to talk about myself, but I feel that mate, when I got injured, shit hit the fan, and it just changed everything. Everybody started to think about life and what was real, and it just yeah, it, it just often takes something of that scale and magnitude to to shift everyone, but. As I said, nothing made sense anymore. Playing football just didn't come into the equation of what's real and what's important. So yeah, I had my own little role uh, in that I, I, and I found it really um, hard, uh, if, 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 that, if you can even say that amongst what you've, what you've no, been through. No, everyone, and that's one of the things I recognised from the start, that it's not just me on this journey. Like everyone's gone through their own little thing in relation to myself, like how it's affected them, how it's affected their decisions, how it's changed their life yeah. like it you can't just exclude it yes it's happened but you can't just move on like well again another incredible insight you know from yourself through circumstances look what you've gained i mean yeah. those that wisdom and insight you know it'd take many lifetimes to get to get that you know and just normal yeah. normal living so i think maybe we've all been a little um a little blessed by that incident that's happened but uh mate the thing is the sky's the limit we're only just starting you're only just starting mate
when you retired from playing at the Newcastle Knights? That's so long ago. <laughs> Throughout your career, you were working at the time when you were playing? When I first started, yeah. Yeah. How long before you finished playing football did you then stop working? Right, when I was 17, when I came out of school, year 10, I got an apprenticeship as a fitter and turner at the BHP. Got transposed into, uh, into the coal later, which was a great job. But I was playing, you know, I was playing first grade and, uh, and had, a, had a trade. So I'd go to work really early, uh, I'd work all day, I'd come here and wait for training to start. And then I'd get home about eight o'clock at night, have dinner and fall asleep and do it again, you know. And my dad was, um, you know, he never let me have a sick even I was crook. He'd say, get there and if you're still crook, then come home. And I never did. How then when you finished playing for the Knights, did you not replace that or did you look to gratitude or how did you move on from that? Because you, everybody looked up when you played, everybody underneath you as a player or played with you. Again, I was lucky. I was at the footy show. I'm still knocking around mates. You yeah. know, it wasn't long before Johnsy was on there. You know, the years kept rolling on. But still, there was something down deep that wasn't, I still felt like I was skidding my wheels because when you got a drive and goal and purpose, which we have with the footy, that's the thing, you know, that you, you, you want to be a goal achieving machine. And certainly in TV, I didn't find the motivation to be, I want to be the best presenter in the world. For me, it was finding what is that thing that really you're so ambitious about, that you really drives you. And I think until you find that, it's kind of hard. That's very tough to find. Um, like you said, it's very clear when you're playing footy. Yeah. Uh, you can tick this off, you can tick that, I can tick this off. How did you find that? And what are they? I found it very hard in, 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 in television um, to do that. Um, it was just great fun, I suppose, mm. to me. But more, I think, in business, you can, you can kind of get that where you know, there's clear objectives and business models and goals. And so I, I you know, played around doing a few different things, and, and I still do. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, there's, you know, there's other things that, that drive you, you know, and you know, they're personal. Sometimes when things are really close to you, like you keep them close to your chest. I think one thing I learned out of the football is that it's all about the reason why you do the things you do. If, if the reason's really strong, you overcome all the obstacles that come in your way. I, I, I often thought about, well, okay, why am I doing this? And how powerful is that reason why I'm doing it? And, and it had to be powerful enough to overcome anything that was coming my way. And there always is in, in league and certainly in life. I mean, there's just thousands of things mm. coming. Because it seems like whenever you want to improve yourself, you, you get a couple of tests. I know you're somebody who loves doing their reading, loves doing research and learning new things. Is that a passion of yours which you found um, after playing sport? Well, I, I wasn't so much when I first left um, because you're still in that physical mode. But as, I, as I've got older, you know, intellectual study is an important part of, of your makeup. You, you, you've got to dwell on that a little bit. And we, teamed, we seem to put like work and money, you know, up the top, you know, your bodily health and diet and a few things up there. But I think it's a real tragedy if you, if you sort of, um, you know, you, you get a great, a great start on life and you don't really introspect about, wow, I don't know where I come from, I don't know where I'm going. There's like six million people on the face of the earth at the moment, in a hundred years we're all gone. This is a bit weird. I mean, you've been given in intellect, you've got to use it and you've got to work out your own particular path of, I want to know what's doing here a little bit. Different conversations that I've had with yourself, you've definitely inspired me to look into different things. Like, and I think that's an important conversation to have with a lot of people. Self-realisation of, of sort of realising, you know, who I really am, what's, what's going on here? This is a weird joint. You look up and you go, there's 50 billion stars up there and the sun and the moon and, 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 and everything seems to be working mathematically. You know, the tides all change and all these incredible things are happening. But we just go along like, you know, in the movies, you just watch the movie and, and see you later. But at least you're educating yourself. You're not just oblivious to it all. Guys that are, as you get older, right, you, all your interests have been physical ones. I like still training, I like gardening, but as the body slows up, other interests are going to take over. Now, whether you like music or whether you like whatever, but to be able to use your brain uh, and get a th same thrill, uh, same yeah, that fulfillment yeah. uh, that you get out of physical things, it helps you later on.